Let me ask you a question. What's the most offensive act you can think of? Something that provokes, something linked to violence or trauma. In most of Europe, it's this, the Nazi salute. In Adolf Hitler's time, this is how Nazis greeted each other. Right arm held up and palm facing down. It was one of the most visible symbols of Nazism and today it brings back trauma, of wars, of persecution and of hardships, which is why scenes from Italy have made people uncomfortable. Take a look at what happened on Sunday. That happened in Rome, outside the former office of a neo-fascist party. It's called the Italian Social Movement. The party does not exist anymore. It has merged into a new one, the Brothers of Italy Party. Does the name ring a bell? It should. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni belongs to the same party, Brothers of Italy. So the opposition is attacking her. They want Meloni to ban neo-fascist groups. And the reason is simple. In the 1920s, fascists captured power in Italy. They were led by dictator Benito Mussolini. He crushed democracy in the country. He also led Italy into World War II. So symbols of Nazism and fascism are considered evil, especially the salute. Now for the record, neither Hitler nor Mussolini invented the salute. It dates back to the Roman Empire, but today it is a provocation. It's considered controversial. Georgia Maloney has not said anything yet, but in the past she has distanced herself from fascism. Listen to the speech from 2022. I have never felt any sympathy or closeness to undemocratic regimes, any regime for that matter. Just as I have always considered the racial laws of 1938 the lowest point in Italian history. It's a shame that will forever mark our people. And yet questions remain. Her party elected a leader called Ignazio La Russa as speaker. La Russa is a collector of fascist relics. His father was secretary of Mussolini's fascist party. Another example is this man. He's now a junior minister in Meloni's cabinet. In this old picture, he's wearing this armband. It was a Nazi symbol. So there is reason for criticism. But can a ban solve this problem? Well, some countries are trying it out, like Australia. They've banned the Nazi salute and the symbol. If you display those, you could land in jail. The maximum punishment is 12 months. The law was proposed and passed last year. It's a response to rising anti-Semitism after the Hamas attack on Israel. So Canberra is sticking to bans. Countries in Europe have done the same, like Germany, Austria, and the Czech Republic. These countries explicitly banned the Nazi salute. Others like Switzerland and Sweden have similar laws, but have they really worked? We've always said that banning is never an answer, but if anything deserves to be banned, it is this Nazi symbols. Yet everyone is convinced, not everyone is convinced rather. Many critics point to Germany. It has banned Nazi symbols since the 1950s, but neo-Nazis are on the rise. In 2021, right-wing extremism reached a 20-year high in 2022, far-right groups plotted a coup. So banning alone is not enough. You must address the root causes of the ideology, whether it's lack of, of awareness or ignorance of history or the lack of messaging. If you think about it, Germany has done pretty well on these counts. They don't hide the Nazi crimes. They make sure children learn about it. Yet they have a neo-Nazi problem. So imagine the situation elsewhere. My point is quite simple. Legal action alone is not enough. Just think beyond just a ban. That's where Italy failed after the Second World War. They banned the fascist party in the 1940s, but the ideology did not die. Fascists organized themselves into new groups. Same ideology, different name. 
So do not hide behind bans and legal actions. Think beyond and speak out. Because in such cases, a simple condemnation goes a long way.